Ladies and gentlemen, we have some issues in the Not Too Late Show parking lot. The owner of the red Mercedes license plate TYL555, your lights are on. For the owner of the Sharmus Chevy Silverado, license plate ROFL555, your windshield wipers are running. To the owner of a pink Camaro with herringbone interior and silver mag wheels, I really like your car. With the owner of a yellow 1972 Fiat, please report to the security guard in the east parking lot. Your tires are on fire. To the owner of the light blue Prius, I hope you got a lot of enjoyment out of that car because it's been stripped right down to the copper wire that runs to the motherboard. There is an illegally parked and smoldering DeLorean in the south parking lot. There is an Arab looking guy trapped underneath the front driver's side tire. And to the owner of the blue Toyota Tundra, the not-too-late show tailgate party is over. The show is about ready to start. And to everyone else parked legally outside your own home, it's the not-too-late show with our very special guest, Gouverneur Morris. Yay! <laughs> Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the not-too-late show. I am your host, Henry L. Frank Buck Demond, broadcasting to you live from the 55th Penguin on the right, Wilkes Land, Antarctica. And I have with me in the cold studio the lovely and somewhat scattered Carrie Kaufman. I resemble that remark. Hey, Frank Buck. Uh, so what kind of animal did you shoot this week? A six-foot-tall man-eating spider Whoa. with a mustache. Okay. At least that's what my wife claimed it was <laughs> <laughs> at four in the morning mm-hmm. in the bathtub. And four in the morning. I, I think it was really the UPS man up to no good. Oh. <laughs> Damn, Spider was a four flusher. <laughs> and and the handheld tracking device kept clogging up the toilet. You have really the most interesting domestic squabbles I think I've ever heard. <laughs> well, I, I only mentioned this because we so totally screwed the pooch on logistics last month. <laughs> Whatever could you be referring to, dear Hank? Well, how about how about you give me some uh, some general announcements and we can clarify what it is I'm straining to confabulate. Uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, where are my announcements? Here they are. All right. Well, quick shout out to TFOK Radio in Oklahoma. They air our pre-recorded episodes every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So go check out their station. They're at Spreaker.com slash Radio, And of course, that's either written down on the video. If you don't see it in the video, it's down in the comments below. Uh, TF, now, just to let you know, TFOK Radio, they are having a benefit to raise money for the Oklahoma chapter of Autism Speaks. It is Saturday, April 26th from 9 to 6 p.m. It's in Shawnee, Oklahoma. There'll be a five-mile walk, basketball tournament, hot dog eating contest, raffles, just a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I'm not even going to try to spell out the link, so please go to the description below, click on it, go check it out. Now, Hank, uh, as you know, I've been spending quite a lot of time on Instagram. Uh, In the process, I have found some absolutely amazing historical galleries. And this amateur historian right here, Miss Blonde, (laughs) I've really been learning a lot. Um, August of this year is the 100th anniversary of when World War I began. Okay. All right. And there are some galleries on Instagram that are specifically tied to World War One. Yes. Uh, First World War, World War One, the Great War at SM, and a couple of other really cool ones. You see them scrolling on the on the screen if you're watching the video. These pictures are really amazing to look at. Some of these provide great historical content. And as always, if you want the spelling to these, you know, just see the comments below. Click on it, follow them, go check it out. They're very educational. And, you know, I've just really enjoyed it. So, guys, y'all keep up the great work. Uh, Last but not least, to the rest of all our dear listeners out there, we really need your help. (laughs) (laughs) Don't sound desperate or anything. (laughs) No, not desperate at all. Um, We have the funds. We're able to record only three shows a month. We want to do at least one or two more. And we can air them on TFOK Radio for... A little while longer anyways. We would love to continue doing all this for our fair listeners, but we really need your help. If you like what you're hearing or what you're watching, please go to the website, click on uh, the Hank Needs Coffee uh, button, and you can donate a one-time donation of however much you like, or however little, 
Every little bit counts. Or you can sign up for a monthly donation. We like those, too. It's all through PayPal, so it's quickly as painless. If you have a business you would like to advertise with us, please get in contact with us. We got Twitter, Facebook, or that contact button that's on the side. Yeah, we're all over the place. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> you don't need to lecture us on, you know, SEO and all that kind of stuff. Well... <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe SEO, but I need the, a deep the social media. How about that? I'm trying, sort of. Oh well, no, <laughs> no. What I'm saying is, we've got it all set up. It's all, the framework is there. Yeah, everything, did, everything is there. We just it's need just, people to come to our website. You know, We're yeah, working on that. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> And click on the donate button. So thank you in advance. No, basically, we need people to give us money. Yeah, that, that too. Please give us money. We need. You can skip the website. Just you know, oh, money. Skip the website. Actually, he's got a point. Skip the website. Give us money. Yeah. All right, y'all are awesome. All right, Professor, you were beating around the bush about something earlier. Yes. Now look, two weeks in a row. Uh, last month, I gave you ample opportunity to open the floor for discussion on Doctor Who, you know, I don't know, paraphernalia stuff. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And I've, and I've actually got something this time. Promise. <laughs> what? What are you eating? <laughs> are you eating a peep? Of course I'm eating a peep. It's Easter. <laughs> this is... This is, yes, I'm eating a peep. Okay. All right. So it's, it, at least I'm not eating the bunny rabbit yeah, this, over there. This is Palm Sunday. Yes, right. Yes. Yes, of course. So, um... Now, I really have something this time. Promise, promise, promise. Oh, you promise now. You're not just taking advantage of me. I mean, uh, you know, I, I know you like to pu push my buttons, but mm -hmm. it's, it's only because of my repressed affection for low-budget British television that you can supply the content for this segment with minimal ridicule. Okay, I think there was a compliment in there somewhere. Um, before anything else comes out of your mouth, I'm going to talk about my little sci-fi thingy. Is, you always call it Doctor Who, but it's it's the sci-fi nut the moment. Do the Doctor Who moment? The okay, yeah, yeah okay. I guess. Well, anyways, I think what Hank is referring to ever so ignorantly, um, <laughs> you know, he's the history nerd. I'm the sci-fi you know, want to be. We like it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, we do. That's what makes it. Um, in May, and I don't have the date. I will have the date for sure next week. Uh, in the middle of May, 17th-ish, we have Comic-Con in Dallas. Now, I know there are Comic-Cons all over the United States, San Diego, New York, and all those other places. The one that I go to and hang my hat at is the Dallas Comic-Con. It's around the 17th. Uh, you can go to DallasComicCon.com. I think they're also on Facebook. They're definitely on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, there's some really, really awesome stuff. Uh, William Shatner is making a showing this time. Robert England is going to be there, for those of you Freddy Krueger fans. Um, and I think half the cast of Firefly is going to be there. Nathan Fillion is, so far, committed. Let's hope he stays this time. Uh, and then just other various members of the cast. Uh, Adam Baldwin is even making a showing this time. So... This is going to be so awesome. <laughs> so, anyways, all right. So that's my moment, and we right. definitely will have more for you next week, and a lot to talk about next month. Well, as per usual, that was highly enlightening. Yeah. Uh, rather like the day I discovered that there was a British cartoonist from the 1950s named H. L. Diamond. Really? Yeah, he drew scary cartoon clowns. Oh, y'all are related, right? <laughs> you know, no. one of these days, we're going to have to have a Doctor Who celebrity on the show, and you're just going to have to sit quietly on your chair while I get to run it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, thanks, Kiri, for taking those few seconds while I ran to the bathroom. Yeah, we're soon. <laughs> yeah all right. Uh, I must say, after a three-week hiatus, it is good to be back. Uh, yeah. I had to recover from that board-breaking celebration last month. Oh, but you did so good, even <laughs> though you are old. <laughs> well, what's the expression? If I had known I was going to live this long, I, I would have taken better care of myself. So is 46 the new 30, Hank? <laughs> well, it's the new 32 and a half, definitely. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, de I'm determined to prove youth isn't lost on the old. Uh, let's, uh, let's just keep my brain going by us using it. So, uh, let's introduce our show's guest. Ladies and gentlemen, our special guest is a founding father whose story is seldom told outside of the state of New York. He hailed from colonial New York, helped draft the U.S. Constitution, and was one of the first abolitionists from the New World. He has a funny name, so forgive me ahead of time for mispronouncing it. Everybody, please welcome Gouverneur Morris. All right, so tell us, uh... 
Captain Boris have a seat there. Uh, how do you pronounce your first name? Guvanua. Guvanur. 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 It's French, right? Yes, it is. So, uh, did uh, people call you Goovy Baby for short? <laughs> Which nice young lady gave that name away? <laughs> okay, so explain the funny name for us. Gary, Gary, don't, don't make fun of his name. Well, <laughs> oh, really, it's quite all right. Many people first mispronounce it, and then they ask just what the heck it means, just like you did. My mother's name was Gouverneur, and she was descended from French Huguenots who, among the Dutch reformers, settled in the region. Wow, you know, me too. I, I'm, I'm of Huguenot stock as well. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt uh, said we're restless, adventurous men of erratic temper and strong intellect, and many Huguenots have a, have a whimsical streak that runs through their character. <laughs> Are you going to make something of it? Uh, <laughs> you're, you're joking, right? He's joking, right, Karen? Uh, you two have more in common than I do. I'm Native American Indian, remember? Well, anyway, Captain Morris, I understand that you and uh, George Washington were friends? Yes, the Morrissey's of New York were instrumental in the Revolutionary War. We essentially financed it. Oh, yeah? Well, how much did it cost? How much do you have? I'm still paying it off. <laughs> you are looking at the wrong guy. <laughs> well, you were also uh, instrumental in forging the Constitution that we have today. Mm. Oh, yes, the Second Constitutional Convention. That was the beating. Hamilton showed up late to every session, and the Maryland delegation constantly complained about the heat. And Madison talked so quietly, I had to borrow Franklin's ear horn. <laughs> so, so Franklin had an ear horn at the convention, huh? Yes. Uh, when the sessions were over, we'd head ov on over to the Maudlin Monkey Pub, and Franklin and I did musical stand-up. Franklin himself would use his ear horn, and I tapped on my wooden leg. Hmm. Okay, somehow I think this is where history detaches and fantasy just really takes over. Oh, come on now. Just run with it. <clears throat> well, sometimes we do a barbershop quartet with Roger Sherman and Rufus King. <laughs> Down by the old mill stream. <laughs> well, now, where was General Washington during all of this? Oh, he couldn't sing with a flip. <laughs> Well, I understand that you and Benjamin Franklin were among the first abolitionists. Yes, our efforts to abolish the institution of slavery were only met halfway by the Connecticut Compromise. It didn't reflect well for the new country to be divided at the onset of its conception, but we more or less built the Compromise into the Constitution so that slavery could still exist, but was bound to self-destruct in a short number of years. Regrettably, my grandchildren suffered for our postponement. Well, how about we just uh, we go ahead and start our our famous segment? Sounds good to me. <laughs> Only jerks hate history. <laughs> All right. Well, last month I told you I was going to hit you with martyrs. Yeah. <laughs> great. But the questions I found were not that great, so. I decided to do a quiz on the Crusades instead. You just made something up then. <laughs> well, I'll never tell. All right. Questions come from Fun Trivia at funtrivia.com. Again, the link is down in the description. You can search for quizzes. For this one, I searched for Crusades, and I had about a four... I had about four quizzes to choose from, and it made this very difficult to put together because there's, there's so many good questions. Um... So, let's see. Starting with number one. What years, years? Yes. What years did the Crusades span? Was it from 306 to 337? All of these are in AD. 1455 to 1485? 1861 to 1865? Or 1095 to 1291 AD? Mr. Governor? The 1455 to whatever the, the, the last year was. Yeah, B. B, B. Let's go with, let's go with B. Uh, it'd have to be uh, 1095 to 1291. 
That is correct, Hank. You got it. Yay. Yay. All right. So question number two. The first crusade involved a very important religious figure who supposedly found the holy lance that was used to stab Jesus Christ. What is the name of this person? Was it Peter Abelard? Peter Bartholomew? Ptolemy Soter? Or Richard the Lionhearted? A, the first one. Peter, Peter what? Salt Peter? Peter, uh, what was the first one? Peter was Peter Abelard. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Cottontail. Peter <laughs> Abelard or Peter Bartholomew. Uh, yeah, I, it's uh, I'm it's R- Richard the Lionhearted. Actually, it was Peter Bartholomew. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, Richard the Lionheart, he was one of the ones who did the Crusades, but yeah. Peter Bartholomew found the lance. Oh, okay. Years and years and years, probably right. like years. Uh, oh, hold, Bartholomew was put through an ordeal by fire in order to prove that he spoke the truth about the Holy Lance and the visions he said he was receiving from St. Andrew. He died because of it, obviously. Peter Abelard was a theologian of the same time period. Richard participated in another crusade. And Ptolemy was one of the Lancex alive. What is that word? <laughs> Dia de Troy. What is a Dia de Troy? Uh, Ptolemy was one of the ones who inherited the territory of Alexander the Great. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Question number three. During the Fourth Crusade, the merchants of Venice misled crusaders by taking them on ships to the wrong city. Instead, oh, you know this one. Oh, well, I know that I'm familiar with the story, but I've got to wait for the question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can turn it around. Right. Instead of Jerusalem, where did the Venetians take them? Rome, Alexandria, Constantinople, or they did go to Jerusalem? You want to say Constantinople. Okay. I'm going to agree with Gouverneur over here. <laughs> <laughs> it is Constantinople. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I got one right. <laughs> 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 Medicals do exist. <laughs> history is not your specialty, I guess. No, definitely not. <laughs> no, not by any means. But he's too busy making history. Yeah, yes. okay. Yeah. Making it and studying it are two different things. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There was, you go. He was a lawyer, actually. So oh, he was. Yeah, he spent, oh, spent he was a lot changing of time. history then. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah, rewriting it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, quite. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Fourth and final question. Uh, Take a deep breath. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe. I don't like. I don't like missing none. That's, <laughs> if I get one right, I'm okay. okay. Well, it just means we're learning yes, altogether. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I'm one upping him. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Did, question number four. Did the Crusaders ever actually capture Jerusalem? Oh, uh, no. Okay, Hank? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. <laughs> and, and, I'm with, and I'm with Mr. Mr. Morris over here. I, I thought, oh, no, because I, I do these questions before I find them, and then I find out what the answer is. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I was like, no, they never succeeded. Yes, they actually succeeded think, on the first one. On the first try. Right. <laughs> yes. Right, and they should have stopped there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they tried, but. Right. And it says here Jerusalem was taking in, because uh, it's the crusade started in 1095. Jerusalem was taken in 1099, 1099 and made into the king, kingdom of Jerusalem. However, there was difficulty in finding anyone to wear a crown in the city where Jesus had worn a crown of thorns and died. Oh, that was, wow. Yeah. They had leadership issues. Yeah. <laughs> you want to expound? <laughs> among, among other things. Yeah. Well, and resource issues too. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. they, they battled like heck to get there and, mm-hmm. and battled all kinds of adversities. Uh, uh, it, it wasn't just the, the Muslims when they got there uh, protecting the city, but it was all everybody in the path on the way there was mm-hmm. there were people that were trying to stop them. Uh, you know, hey, you hey, you can't march there, and you know that yeah. kind of thing, and <laughs> uh, uh, you know they'd get robbed and stuff, and people would well, start getting uh, start get start getting sick and die, mm-hmm. or you know, people would turn around, and and so you know by the time they got there, were there were probably well, I don't want to, I, I hate giving out numbers because I always mm-hmm. get the numbers wrong, but the, the it was an appreciable <laughs> number <laughs> less than what oh, they started man. with, uh-huh. and uh, so the, yeah, they conquered the city probably more more by element of surprise because okay. the Muslims were like, 
What the heck is Who this? Who are these guys? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing here? By the time they got done with them, they chopped their numbers. And, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so you know, and they, they, they stuck around a few years. They were able to hold out for a few years, but nobody would – it was like – uh, you know, all the all the duchies and and the kingdoms in in Europe would mm-hmm. change hands, and you know they probably sit around the table after a king died and say, mm-hmm. well, "What are we going to do about Jerusalem? <laughs> 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 Who can we send to Jerusalem? Anybody? Oh, Any volunteers?" Oh, gosh. <laughs> they so, didn't think of this ahead of time. And huh? so, and so the knights and mercenaries would get up and say, "Yes, I'll go to Jerusalem," and mm-hmm. you know they they. Get in there, and they'd start attacking and stabbing people again. And <laughs> wow, well <laughs> they thought out plan. They didn't have any administrators that were worth a darn. Oh, so, man. so anyway, but yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the Crusades in a nutshell. How's that? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you write you. that. Write that in your paper, right? right. <laughs> no, <All> right. don't. <laughs> don't quote oh, me on. in your. Don't quote me in your history paper. Oh, you'll find yourself in the John Stewart show getting slammed. <laughs> Oh, and I'm happy to get one question right. One is better than none. Yeah. Exactly. Very exactly. Good. You did an awesome job. Class is half good. full. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. It is time once again for History, History Strikes right, 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 right. Back. Uh, this is the time of the program when we focus on the air date or date of air and look back at some of the things that happened on that particular day or this particular day. Anyone can go to Wikipedia, I suppose, and find things out. But uh, I've also found that Wikipedia doesn't tell us everything. No, you think? <laughs> I always manage to find one or two items that escape George Soros's n- nearly dead eyes. My good, you really don't <laughs> like that guy, do you? You mean the decrepit Nazi socialist that inhaled too much poison gas during the First World War? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Find me someone who does like him. All right. Uh, for April 13th in history, we have uh, some of my notes here. I have uh, Henry IV and the Huguenots, uh, the Edict of Nantes. Uh, the Huguenots, uh, I won't go into the story of the Huguenots t- today. Uh, aww. Aww. <laughs> it, it would be apropos, I suppose. Yeah, since actually we have, would. Since we have two Huguenot descendants yes. here in the, in the studio. Uh, but uh, basically, um, Protestant Protestantism was outlawed in France. Uh, it was outlawed in other countries as well, but we'll focus on France and in and, uh, and the Edict of Nantes. And um, it, it, the king that was in power, which was Henry the Fourth at this time, fifteen ninety eight, he issued the Edict of Nantes, which said it's okay to be a Huguenot. We're not going to string you up or kill you. Oh, well, that was nice of him. <laughs> for not being Catholic. Yes, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yeah, they're very kind. Yeah, but uh, guess what? What? A few years later, it was revoked. Of course. And it was bad to be a Huguenot again in France. So, Aww. yeah. <laughs> Welcome to America. <laughs> <laughs> we like you here. Uh, in 1982, Ronald Reagan gave a speech to uh, business owners, small business owners. Uh, and that speech is, well, the speech in its entirety is not on our website, but I have. It will be. I have commentary on it. Yes. There is a there is a, a hysterical revision that uh, I did uh, a couple of years ago regarding that. In 1877, uh, this is a weather event. The second coastal storm in just three days hit Virginia and the Carolinas. The first storm flattened the sand dunes at Hatteras and widened the Oregon Inlet three quarters of a mile. The second storm produced hurricane force winds along the coast of North Carolina, causing more beach erosion and land transformation. Uh, that was in 1877. Uh, in 1970, the famous quote Apollo from Apollo 13, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> and they had a big one, too. Yeah, it was a three-day problem. Oh, so, oh was it that long? Yeah. Took oh, a, wow. Took, took, a, yeah, it, took it, them three days to... Three days to finally get back to Earth, yeah. Oh, my word. Uh, um, in 1796, the first elephant brought to the U.S. arrived at New York City from Bengal, India. Oh, cool. India. She was exhibited by Jacob Cronenshield at the corner of Beaver Street and Broadway. The elephant was two years old and six and a half feet high and had behavior described as, I got this from a British website, described as it eats, th- it eats 30 pounds of rice besides hay and straw, drinks all kinds of wine and spirituous liquors. <laughs> oh, that's great. Get an elephant drunk. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> First they draw, and now it's like, let's see what happens. We give them some whiskey. Uh, it eats every kind of vegetable. It will also draw a cork from a bottle in its trunk. Well, of course, it's, 
<laughs> it's got to get to the wine. Yeah, exactly. The event was recorded by the New York Argus, published on the 23rd. Oh, the publishing date was 23rd of April, 1796. Oh, my word. Yeah, yeah. I think I got this from... Oh, uh, there's a science uh, science website. This day in history uh, in science. Uh-huh. Uh um, I can't remember the 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 name of it. I, I have it bookmarked, so that's why I haven't committed it to memory. And uh, and let's see. I'm trying to think if this is. Oh, in uh, in uh, 1939, Wuthering Heights was released, which is actually a, a really nice movie, uh, <laughs> which features Lawrence Olivier and Merle Oberon. Uh, which who was uh, his wife at the time? Oh, so the the movie was released in 1939. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yes, because folks, there is a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was before the movie. Yeah. 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 That, that's the part you always got to tell people. So, so is there a is there a movie for that? But well, the book came before the movie. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know how much say um, uh, Emily Bronte had in mm-hmm. the movie, the making of the movie. Probably none since she was dead. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it's seriously. Yeah, you're right. I guess it did seriously predate. Yeah. 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 But, but, you know, it'd be nice to have, see your book and made it into a movie, but. Wasn't it made into a movie like a couple of years ago or something? Didn't they redo it? Oh, or? oh I'm sure. They they always. Yeah. yeah I'm thinking of something they always, similar. They always attempt to, to redo things and make them better. Yeah. Or claim that they're better. Not always. <laughs> Just look at Psycho for one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, um, oh, and... Uh, Something about an Apache raid? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have uh, in 1871 an Apache raid from San Pedro, uh, Arizona, and Eskimenzin was blamed. Eskimenzin. What is an Eskimenzin? Uh, well, I don't know what it is, but it was a it was a man. Oh, it was, oh, he... Yes. Okay. Yeah, he was a uh, he was an Apache. He was he was. See, this is I, I think we've talked before about the Apaches in in, mm-hmm. in Arizona and mm-hmm. Geronimo was an Apache, right? But he mm-hmm. was a certain type of Apache, and there's like five different types of Apaches. And, really? And what would happen is, you know, the the settlers people would move in, and somebody's you know kid would get kidnapped, or or somebody would get stabbed, or. Mm-hmm hatcheted or whatever and and so then the people of the the town or the local community would be like well it was them apaches well and then they then they'd go capture this uh, you know an innocent guy and iska was was one of these guys in, in one of these cases mm-hmm. and, and he's like i'm not this I'm, I'm apache but not the same apache it's a different <laughs> apache honestly so it's that community over there yeah <laughs> you know, it's like go pick on them it's like blaming nurse sharks for you know, getting your <laughs> hand chewed off. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but, uh, uh, and I have, you know mm-hmm. what? I probably didn't get an opportunity to do any circling. Oh. I know I did, did two of them. Did you go to them. History Orb? I, I, yeah, I went to History Orb, and uh, I must have done this all backwards. Oh, you backwards? Never. <laughs> yeah. Never in a straight line. What do you have there? I, I have a peep. Yeah? Yes. Uh, it, okay. It's Easter. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's Palm Sunday. Do you want one? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. You want one, Mr. I, Morris? Oh, no, thank you. I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> Sorry, I, it's this is that time of year where I have a seriously bad Easter candy habit. And I see. So it's pardon me as I, you know. Oh well, well go ahead. I mean, so I, I I I plan on you know after the 21st of you know finally getting off the habit, but for now I'm just going to bite little ears. Uh, pardon you? Well, I'm the gouverneur, so I can pardon you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat their ears and then their eyes and then their little noses. And- <laughs> um, in 9, 989 on Anno Domini, uh, the battle at Ibidos, Byzantine Emperor Basilus II beats Bardus Phocas. <laughs> Focus. Artist. Focus. <laughs> yeah. I bet. I bet his name was made fun of quite a bit. I, Focus. <laughs> Focus. Perhaps. Artist. Focus. Fartus. <laughs> Sm- smokers. <laughs> what? What? He's been smoking. <laughs> In eleven eighty uh, is uh, Republic Day of Geinhausen. I don't know. I'm going to look that one up. This is what I get for doing things backwards, non-linearly. Yeah. Well, you um, find the oddest names. I think my favorite one was that one Slavic something or other that was about 
10 pages long. The Icelandic one? Yeah, yes, the, that's the, it. Ice, it was the Icelandic uh, football club is what it was. <laughs> was that what it was? <laughs> yeah, it was founded in 18-something or other. Like it had more Zs and Ts than it did vowels. Who cares about that? Who knows? Sounds exciting. Who, who would, <laughs> did, you, did you play football? When, yeah. I wanted to, but uh, my my hip was bothering me, so I couldn't mm. do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, well. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. George Frederick Handel's Oratorio Messiah was performed for the first time at New Music Hall in Dublin in 1742. Um, I have... In 1959, the United States Air Force launches Discoverer 2 into polar orbit. Orbit. That's another one I'm going to have to research. Yeah. <sighs> Let's see here. You want me to look that up? Um, sure. Look up Discoverer 2. What specifically am I looking up? Um, the- Discoverer 2, 1959. Okay. This- oh, well, speaking of Crusades in 1250, we have the Seventh Crusade is defeated in Egypt. Louis X. Louis the Ninth of France is captured, um, and then you want to talk about Discover Two? Yes, go right ahead, please. All right, so Discover Two was a cylindrical satellite designed to gather spacecraft engineering data and to attempt ejection of an instrument package from orbit for recovery on Earth. Uh, the spacecraft was launched uh, into a polar orbit by a Thor Agena A booster. It was 1.5 milligrams in diameter, uh, 5.85 meter. You mean millimeters? Meters, meters. Oh, meters, okay. Meters in diameter, uh, 5.85 meters long, and had a mass after second stage separation of roughly 3,800 kilograms. And by the way, this link is in the comments, so if y'all want to read the whole article, because I'm not going to bore y'all with the whole article. (laughs) The Discover 2 mission successfully gathered data on propulsion, communications, orbital performance, and stabilization. It was managed by the Advanced Research Projects Agency of the Department of Defense and the U.S. Air Force. Primary goal was to develop a film return photographic surveillance satellite to assess how rapidly... (laughs) (laughs) Nineteen fifty nine, right? Yes. To assess how rapidly the Soviet Union was producing long range bombers and ballistic missiles and where they were being deployed, and to take photos over the Sino Sino Soviet bloc to replace the U two spy planes. It was part of the secret Corona program, which was also used to produce maps and charts. I'll be doggone those sneaky Air Force guys. Mm-hmm. How about that? Yeah, the goal was not <laughs> revealed to the public at the time. Imagine that. <laughs> it was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, go, go. I'm not going to read it now, but go read the whole article. It's in the link below. <laughs> yeah, good old Eisenhower. I, you know, I, I, Ike was, Ike was a great guy. You know, he was born in Texas and, and, uh, he, he won the, helped win the Second World War for all the Allies. But boy, one thing, <laughs> one thing was that. <laughs> That spy plane incident. Oh, boy. Oh. No, we don't do spy planes. <laughs> what are you talking about spy planes? Sure. Huh? What? Oh, sure, that wreckage looks like a spy plane. And that guy looks like a, a pilot, <laughs> a spy plane pilot. Yeah, sure, but we don't do spy planes. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> this is what, this is where we hear an imitation of we don't need no stinking spy planes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Governor Morris, so you... Uh, uh, there's a, there's actually a series out, uh, something's going to come out here, a movie or a series about, uh, spies, Washington spies. You, do you ever get to meet any of Washington spies or? No, I can't say that I have. Yeah. You can't say that you have. No. Right. I see. Mm-hmm. Wink, wink. You, you can't say. <laughs> wink, wink. There exactly. you go. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> I may have at some point, but, uh, mum's the word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> well, before we uh, before we actually uh, close up here, I think we're running a little bit out of time here. But okay. let, let me just mention a, a couple of books. Okay. Regarding Gouverneur Morris, uh, no. fascinating and interesting character. Yes. Yeah. Are you going to ask me what the first rule of the book club is? You always do that. Oh well. Um, okay. I've got a good mind to join a club and beat you over the head with it. Uh, well, well, from that sound bite, I believe we have a little bit of time now for book club. Carrie? Now, this is the part where you ask me what the first rule of book club is. Carrie, the first rule of book club is don't ever talk about asking me to ask what the first rule of book club is. 
Oh, I need caffeine. <laughs> uh, I actually have two books uh, to mention, and they are b- both germane to Gouverneur Morris. Um, oh, cool! The fascinating character in history. I, I, uh, you know, I. You We're going to talk about you, sir. I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did I vote? We, we, we all know about the the founding fathers, and we've been told. We've been told vicious lies about them as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one of the founding fathers that, that seems to escape mention, at least outside of New York State, is uh, is Gouverneur Morris. And um, a fascinating character, interesting person. Uh, as we mentioned, he was part of the uh, building of the Constitution. I do believe he signed the Declaration of Independence. I do believe I read that. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, he was a he was a a, a lawyer, a, a good orator and an arguer, and uh, served in the the New York uh, State House uh, for for a few years before uh, before colonial um, before colonial Britain broke and became the thirteen colonies. And uh, the first book I would recommend is Plain Honest Men, which is actually about the drafting of the Constitution. And um, I, I mentioned this one. It's not a biography per se of Gouverneur Morris, but it devotes a quite a bit of time to him and to his character and uh, to some of the anecdotal stories about him. Uh, and it, it really, I mean, it's just a good uh, uh, a good book to read for for finding out about how the Constitution was drafted and the process that we went through and and the due diligence we took to to produce something that was going to be worthwhile and long lasting. The other book is uh, Theodore Roosevelt's Gouverneur Morris, which is a which is a biography. Uh, I have to admit that the first, roughly the first half of it, was held my interest for uh, for quite a while, and then the second half of it is kind of kind of goes on and on, and kind of you kind of lose the character of Gouverneur Morris, and it talks more about historical events. But uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, you know, if you ever if you if you live outside of New York State, or even if you live in New York State and they don't teach you these things, <laughs> you, you never know, right? Uh, it, it, this, these are these are two books to uh, two great books to talk about, and I think that wraps it up for book club and most of our segments. This is Keisha Carson. How do we learn truth? Jesus said, "If you learn of my teachings, you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free." Ladies and gentlemen, if your child is currently enrolled in public school, make sure that the history curriculum that they are receiving is based on truth. And know that it is impossible for any individual to know the truth without seeking it. If you have any doubts about any assignment that comes home from your child's school, do not hesitate to ask questions. First from the teacher and from other people you trust, whether they be academicians spiritual leaders, or other professionals. Remember, just as teachers ask students to not rely on one source for enlightenment, teachers should not rely on a single source for their curriculum. Good night and God bless. All right, right. and that seals up another edition of the Not Too Late Show. God willing, and the creeks don't rise. We'll be back next week with a new edition. 